What is up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Planet Base. My name is Splattercat. Happy to have you here today as we hang on out for a little bit and take a look at our base and try to just get the infrastructure all nice and sorted out. There have been, like, whims and fancy taking place where I don't really understand why the welfare goes up and down like it does most of the time. Because people have most of their needs met. I think for the most part it has to do with the fact that nobody takes care of their happiness like ever. And so they leave it for last and then eventually they get around to it. And by the time they get around to it, it's too late. And then while they get the happiness taken care of, everything else falls off. And it's just, I think happiness needs to be higher up on the priority list. Like they need to go work on their happiness when it's at yellow. Like right when it first hits yellow over everything else, I think, would probably make it function a tad better. But for right now, it's actually, I think this is the order of things that they will try to take care of or something. All the oxygen one seems a little bit sketchy. But either way, welcome on back to Planet Base. It's nice to have you here. You don't have anything that I want, so I'll wait with you. In the previous episodes, we had built a big old airfield so that more people could come along and help us out with stuff. Unfortunately, right after that, we got like 20 people that came into our base. And when those 20 people came in, oh, we made decent for just a second. If we can stay at decent, we get tourists and we get immigrants. And it should be all right. But if we can't hold it decent, it's problematic to say the least. And so anyways, we pop back up to decent every night when people go to bed and... I don't know. Part of it's organizational. I think people can't get around to grab the stuff that they need a lot of the time because this entire area of the base, if I bulldoze it, what happens now is like what happened over here. Let's say that I destroy a building over here. Because I've built all around it very tightly, the collision won't let me put more in, which can be a little bit of a sad factor. But here, let's put that. No. I wish that it didn't close your... Oh, shit. Right when I'm in the middle of a precision operation to... Nope. Turn back on. Thank you. Yellow alert. Yellow alert. That's what my alarm would sound like. All day long. Wake up to it every day, kids. I bet it'd make you happy. You'd be in a better mood all day long. You'd be like, hmm. I woke up to the splatter alarm. Makes me pretty happy right now. We should be getting pretty much full power draw at the moment. As the solar flare comes in. So hopefully the batteries will start refilling. I'm glad that we haven't had to fiddle around too much with any of our power issues. Although we do still... Have a chunk of the grid that's offline. Hopefully it'll all fill up today and it'll be alright. Everything will be nice and purdy. Most of the game at this point is just watching things unfold because we've mostly run out of areas to do anything in the first place. I'm hoping this will help out down here. I do wish that there were further places that I could maybe develop a little bit better down and in here. But... So we've got a personal dorm there, personal dorm there. We got a little bar right here, although people don't use it very often, so I don't know if, like, happiness is actually much of a problem on this side. It's like just about everybody's unhappy, and it's weird because I've got enough bar slots for everybody, it's just that they don't take care of it. And I would actually say that it probably needs to be looked into from a development side. They, like, right there, perfect example, they wait until they're in the orange with it before they start fiddling with it. Whereas with hunger or sleep or anything else, they go after it the second they go yellow. I'm not sure why their happiness is left to dither and kind of drag its feet when compared to the other attributes. But that's just the problem that I've seen so far. We are at decent right now, so let's go ahead and go no alert real fast. We got intruders coming in. They are engaged in a rapid shootout. He's probably going to die. Wow, there are a lot of you guys in here. Like, I wish there was some storyline explanation for why these guys are invading our base, too. Like, there's no explanation as to why, like, people are attacking us all the time. Like, they just run into our base and open fire on us randomly, like, the second they get in the door. I, I need some kind of, like, framing or reference for all this. I think we're losing guards pretty hard, and so I'm thinking we may actually want to try... Let's go in pretty hardcore on guards for right now and see if we can't land another 10 or 15 guards. I think with a bigger security force, what is this? Ship containing a small group of fugitives are asking to land. Uh, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. This trader, he's got a 60% commission, so he can get the hell on out of here. Come with good prices. You also got a big dent in your ship right there. I don't know if it's supposed to be there, but you might want to get that ironed out. More visitors dropping on in, so we got two right there. That's probably the ship that they were talking about. And so it looks like they're going to send several people, five people on board. So we'll make a little bit of cash right there, which will be nice for buying some more robots or something. All right, let's speed the game on up now that our solar flare is out of the way. I think... I mean, it's hard to tell just how many assigned beds I have anymore. 
I really feel like I should be able to put something right there. Like, that feels like something should go right there. And technically, I could bulldoze these on the back end, but I'd prefer to... Let's expand them out this way. So what I'll do is I'll do a gargantuanly giant turbine over here. Let's connect that right there. And then on top of that, we'll put in another sizable dish on this side. And connect that. And once those are finished, they'll come back over here. And I will bulldoze this little space, I think. And after bulldozing this little space, that should give me some more room to put in some more, like, little happy beds so people can be stoked. We have another transport ship over here, so that brought in a guard. Good, because that's what we needed. We need lots and lots of guards, which actually in turn means that we probably need some more guns, too. Did I turn off the gun factory, or is the gun factory still doing its thing? Arms Workshop appears to be functioning. Robots falling apart left and right because... I can't keep people working on them. That's another thing I wish, is that the workers would work on whatever their job is until it's done. As of right now, they multitask. They hit things for a little while, and after they hit the things for a little while, they go do something else for a little while, and it's just like a hundred jobs all half done. Sung Chamei, a visitor. Cool. Trading ship, what you got? 55% commission. I may be forced to suck it up for right now. Because I need your stuff. So I'm going to give you those right there, just to take the edge off of the expenditure here. And then on top of that, we're going to give them the rest in cash, because we actually have that right now. Cold hard cash is what we are rocking with at the moment, so I enjoy rocking every now and again. After all, insert geology joke. Are these finished over here? So that one's up and running, and that one should be up soon. Another colony ship coming in. We've got more guards, actually. Fantastic. I'm probably going to let the guards... Oh, I don't know. I'll probably, now that we've recruited a couple more guards, how many guards do we have? 20? I'll probably let that get up to 25. I think having 16 to 20% of your population be guardsmen, like people that are ready at arms to go fight with whoever comes at us, I think that's a pretty solid plan. I think that's where I'd like to keep things. How's our water supply looking, by the way? It still should be fine. Go ahead and wipe that on out. Wipe that on out. I'll probably just get rid of this little guy right here, too. And then on this side with the water extractor, we have to replace that because my water extraction strategies, as of so far, have been absolutely poo. I did the Lethe fight, right? Or Letho fight right before I did this. That Letho fight was brutal in The Witcher 2. His Ard, actually. It's not even the fight that's brutal. It's just the Ard. It's the way he spams Ard the entire time, and Ard does, like, 50 damage for him for some reason. Like, I didn't even know Ard dealt damage until I fought him. Got a couple more guards coming in. Are we at 25% yet? With two more guards, we are at 11. You know, letting guards flow in is not a terrible plan. I, I think I'm probably just going to stick with that for right now. I don't think we have the guns to make it all happen. But we're printing out arms as fast as we can, and so... What's that? Somebody totally just made like a I'm dying noise. Oh, he died of asphyxiation. Where was that at? How did he die of asphyxiation? Huh, that's odd. I have no idea what happened over there. A little bit of a confusing situation. 50% commission sounds good to me. I've got stuff that I would like to have. And actually on this one, I should be able to just go all in on some starch. Save the good stuff for later. Let them have the starch for a bit. I assume that our happiness must be at least a little bit higher, considering more people continue to flow in. It seems to be the main issue that the game has with things seems to be related to personal cabins. At a certain point, it seems like you turn a corner and everybody wants their own personal dormitory. And I'm okay with that. It's not a huge deal. It's something that I can obviously handle. It's just that you have to retrofit at a certain point. I'm also going to bulldoze you real fast if you're okay with it. Obviously, he's probably not okay with it. I mean, after all, this is his life as a water extractor, but this looks like excess space right here. So I would rather use this for something that's useful in the area. Like maybe... Oh, I don't know. I definitely need the armament fabrication to finish. 
Some coins right there for the services, which is great. Where's that airlock at? Oh, that airlock's not that far. That's fine. I was a little bit worried about the airlock for a second. I was like, mm, where's my airlock at? What is going on with my airlock? So what could I do a little bit better on this side? They got plenty of manufacturing facilities on this side. I don't see people... This guy's over here staring at a ficus. So I don't know. Let's go ahead and get that all nice and tooled up. We got another trade stock over here on a 35%. Tra oh, we're about to make some money right here, kids. We're about to make some money right here. It might be a bit. It might be a big stockpile run, but it's gonna be worth it. It is gonna be worth it. We got plenty of medical supplies, I think, to make that happen further. So 425 coins. That'll put us in a position where we'll have quite a bit of cash on hand to buy things that we want. In the coming episodes. I don't know if these air... How much air do I have? Is there a place where I can look at how much air I have? And just sort of figure that out? And no, not in between my ears, smartass internet guy. I can hear you right now being like, What? You mean in between your ears? We're going to need a bigger unit of measurement. Hey, screw you, buddy. Screw you. Let's see. Here we got... 193. But it doesn't say... Is there something around here? Oxygen, there we go. And so we have enough oxygen for 406 people. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. These guys are pending resources over here, but they actually took care of that carrying job a lot faster than I thought they would. And we are about to get paid out, which is ultimately the point. If you're not going to get paid for something, mm, I'm not building this place as a hobby. This is not like a non-profit. This is definitely a profit. So we could use... I mean, I don't know. I suppose, is this full right here? 88%. I need to get rid of some starch. I may have to bite the bullet in the coming days and just build a whole bunch of starchy type stuff. i just say to go for big cabins in here wherever you can get them. I mean, i got to wait for them to clean up the trash off the ground because I don't think it'll place the... It won't place the thing on the ground while there's like metal and stuff sitting around. So hopefully, that metal have a condition? Huh. Apparently degrades over time. Who knew? Visitor ship right there. What you got for me? 35% commission. Give me that robot. I'll take it right now. Actually, I'll also take your spares. And if there was an arms dealer, I would take some weapons too, but we'll just have to do for right now. 189 space bucks. I started playing Red Dead. Anyways, let's start with the things that I was already talking about. I did the Letho fight. In The Witcher 2, and oh my god, that guy's art is like out of control. It's not so much like the fight wouldn't be bad, it's, it, that the art is the only thing I had trouble with, because sometimes he would hit you with the art and then instantly throw a grenade afterwards, which you physically can't get up fast enough to get out of the way, and so the art would do like 50 damage, and the grenade would set you on fire for like another 100 damage, and the HP counts in that game are like really, really low, and so... This is a nasty fight in general, and then I realized I could just spam art the whole time and pin him against a wall with heavy strikes. And so I just did that from then on in. I tried to fight it the light way by or the right way by like parrying and blocking and all that stuff the first time. But it became apparent that I was gonna have to cheese mode shortly thereafter. I feel like there's extra space right there and I done screwed up somehow, but Shoot out. Yep, see the guards were in for that one. We lost one guard compared with four of their guys. Janiqua Stewart has died due to combat wounds. They need a memorial in this game. They need that place just like you have an XCOM. I've decided. Where it's just like... <laughs> like when you click on it, it's got like that solitary sad horn in the distance. Then you got like the drums that go bum bum. It's like the... Just think of every army commercial ever. If you're not from the United States, I don't know if you guys have like crazy propaganda recruitment messages where you live too. But here, you ever notice like in all the videos, it's always like guys doing like running and like doing action stuff. They've always got like ghillie suits on and shit. And everybody I know in the military like drives trucks or like changes the oil on vehicles or in general is just like a guy that works inside of some random hangar, like rebuilding planes or something. And they'd be like, it is not nearly as epic as the commercial. I think I know one guy out of every, like, I grew up and graduated around the time, a little bit after 9-11, so recruitment was at an all-time high after that happened. And out of everybody I know, I think only one guy 
One guy ended up like a special forces ranger, sniper, scout type guy in Afghanistan. And another one, a guy that I was friends with in high school, became an airborne ranger and was constantly jumping out of planes and doing all kinds of badass stuff and has like the coolest pictures ever on his Facebook. And then another friend of mine actually became a tank driver too. But other than that, like, everybody else. That's three people out of like a hundred people I know that went into the military. Every time you go to a recruitment center too, they never put the tank mechanic on the little sticky, you know how they have the sticky pictures for walls that they stick up on the wall? Or like on glass windows, they have those things that you paint onto the windows. They never have the guy fixing the tank on those windows. It's always some guy in a ghillie suit with like the most kitted out AR-15 like ever. Like standing there in some super office in like action pose. There's like a little guy behind it, a recruiter's like, like throwing fireworks in the air. <laughs> oh man, I could do that job. I could do recruitment. I got it. We got a lot of people sleeping over here, which I think is a little bit of a downer. If I could fit in... Like a personal cabin over here, that'd be pretty cool because we already got the big one on that side too. And so by my estimation, if we could get away with putting one in over here, I would hope that they would carry this stuff back. And this may not work. This may actually be an all-around failure. But if I could put in a reasonably sized cabin over here or two of them, I think I would be okay with that too. Basically just retrofitting at this. Hey, there it is right there. I'll take it. Where was it? I saw it. You can't lie to me, game. I saw it. It was over there. I saw it. Oh, it's doing that thing again where it showed. Oh, there was it. It was right. Come on, game. I know you got this. Let me have this. Uh, I'm going to wait till they clear out the rubble. It'll probably be fine. So how's our guardsman situation looking? Of the 22 guardsmen. In terms of percentages of our total population, hold on. Carrier bot at 35% commission, yes please. Come be my friend forever, robot. And I don't really want anything else from here, so we're just going to trade that on over. Either way, looks good to me. And I'll wait for people to move this stuff around. There we go, move that box. They haven't even moved the boxes over here. I have lots of carrier drones and shit now, too. They're all over the place. So if I go to here, we got 11% of our population is currently guardsmen. That's cool. I think we need biologists and guards for right now. Those are the two big things that I'm looking at. The control center over here, we got another cabin. Let's get you kitted up real quick-like. Perfecto. I messed up the other cabin over on the other side. I know that I did. You don't have to tell me. But I also, other than the Letho fight, I beat that this morning before I started recording. And that was... I'm not sure how I feel about The Witcher 2. It's one of those games, like, I've always felt like Witcher is definitely overhyped in terms of its mechanics. And the way it just does not feel polished. It's definitely got kind of like that same Gothic 3 feeling. Where, like, a lot of the stuff in the game is simply just not polished or well designed. But at the same time, if you're looking for, like, sprawling RPGs, it's like, what choice do you have? You know, they don't come out very often. And so anyways, well, sprawling AAA RPGs. So at the same time, it's one of those things you kind of accept the good with the bad. Although I think the Sterling 10 out of 10 reviews and stuff like that are definitely coming from people with rose-colored glasses on. Get that all nice and fixed up. Man, I got like an entire section of my base that is all just like sleeping quarters. That's cool though. I like it when it's organized like that. Can they even get back here? Got an airlock right there and right there. Keep hoping that at some point, like, carrier drones will come out here and get this done, but there must be a lot of, like, carrying to be done right now. On this side, this is going to be our civilian operations center, where mostly they just babysit telescopes and things like that. It's not going to be that big of a deal. But I'm going to put in, like, three telescope consoles, and then I'll put in a couple of radio consoles. And then from there, what that means is that I can eliminate these from my other command centers and make it so that we have other things taking place. What have you guys got right now? You got carrier bots? I'll take them. Give me them bots. As many bots as I can have. Every single one of these bots ends up doing menial tasks that other people don't have to do. And so net-wise, it's a really, really good investment. 
Let's go ahead and kill the telescope consoles. They're going to have to go and work elsewhere. And obviously, I need to get down in here. Where was that other place at? There it is. And I need to prioritize everything in here so that I got to make sure that somebody's always working in there. We'll expand that out as we need it. I may put a couple of security guys down in here, but three consoles each, we should be all right. And then in here, that opens up all kinds of space for military consoles. And so this place's only job will be to monitor the comings and goings in our base. And so there we go. All nice and solved. We got visitors over on that side. We're making a little bit of money. Things are looking good. The colony has become just absolutely absurdly large. Like, it's getting big enough to where if you want to walk from one end to the other, I mean, look down this hallway and just watch how far it goes, you know? It's a really, really, really big hallway. I'd be willing to bet that if you look down that hallway, you might not even be able to see down... Well, no, you won't be able to see down to the end anyways because the O2 generators are in the way. But you get what I mean. If the O2 generators were not there, still... Irreparable damage has taken place. I think I could probably kill off this cabin and make a bigger one. And so I think I shall. I hate it when I do. I might even be able to fit two if I plan this right. Like if I go one right there. It'll wipe out a couple of consoles. But realistically, I have another security center already over on the right-hand side that's monitoring as well. What is this? A colossal panel patent. I actually would like the guns first, please. If you could... Uh, I might trade for those. Let's trade for those. I think it'd probably be a better plan. I don't want to burn through my cash right now. I tend to save that just for robots. Actually, I may take one for the team right here and do a bunch of starch. It's going to suck, but actually, I might take his cash, too. Let me see. If I'm going to do a big offloading anyways, I might as well do it all now. You know what I mean? So, there it is. We'll trade that on over, and Jesus, is that going to take a long time? And so it's probably a really, really good spot for me to break off the episode since absolutely nothing is going to happen until I get that finished off. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Planet Base. I hope you're all enjoying it. I'm having a good time with the game. I like the game a lot. It's one of my favorite games of the year. I would say that among things I have played on the channel, this one has been more of a pleasure than some of them have. And quite a bit more of a pleasure at that. So I'll see you all later. Thank you for coming. See you next time.